Hey guys, good morning. Um, I hope you had a good week last week and a wonderful weekend. Hope Memorial Day was uh, good for you. I, I hope you uh, got to eat some hamburgers and hot dogs and whatnot and uh, spent some time remembering family that had passed and, uh, you know, our service members and all that. Uh, you know, I, I got to work through the uh, Memorial Day weekend, but we're still going to do, uh, we, we cook out an awful lot anyhow. Um, yeah, but I, I will take time this week to uh, go see my mom, um, well, her graveside at any rate, and uh, spend a minute with her and, you know, the ones I love. I think about them all the time, so, I mean, they're always in my memories, as they should be. Um, but anyhow, so today, uh, I thought we would uh, do a couple of things. So, we I had talked several times about uh, and showed him, uh, one of my last videos, uh, the property that we were putting the garden in, uh, we were telling up property or telling up the garden area, got the fence up. And unfortunately, uh, due to circumstances beyond our control, that's not going to be able to happen now. Um, which is okay. And I mean, it, that's, that happens. Life happens. Um, plan B is always good. So what we did was, uh, we, uh, planted some here at the house. And, uh, matter of fact, I'm getting ready to show you here in a second what all we've done. So, matter of fact, let's just go take a look. All right, we'll go see outside. All right, hold on for me one second. All right, so let's head outside because outside's a good place to be. Well, before we even walk out the door, here's all the plants I have left over right there. Not a whole lot, but a few. So you're asking, what are you going to do with those? Um, well, I'm going to take them and so my neighbor is going to take some and, uh, I've got other family that wants some and, and all that. There's my beautiful flowers that are coming to fruition. Uh, right there is, of course, the herbs we planted. I did add some. And we got some jalapenos down there. And then in each corner there is my habanero plants. But up here we've got, you know, some uh, sweet basil. See, I left the tags in because my memory is horrible. Uh, some cilantro back there. I've got some thyme here. Got some parsley there, and we've got some dill there. So when we make pickles here in a, in a few months, when we can't pickles, we can use fresh thyme. Um, and then, of course, we still have lots of tomato plants down here, and some bell peppers, a variety of bell peppers, and you know some uh, some more jalapeno plants and some uh, poblano plants. I've got poblanos planted. So sorry, I didn't mean to turn that so fast. And they come down here. You know, of course, in this flower bed, not only do we have some absolutely gorgeous flowers, but then I got more bell peppers. Or no, I'm sorry, those are jalapenos planted through there. And then we've got, you know, some more of the uh, garden plants. And if you look back here behind that plant, there's another bell pepper. Uh, in the box there is our uh, Boston cucumbers. Those are, we'll pickle those. And uh, then some more... Uh, bell peppers here we found that uh it's okay to uh put vegetables in with your flowers so then if we come out here past the swing set and the fire pit and the table uh i built so i went ahead and just quickly built a planter box out of cedar so that way it won't go anywhere and here we've got our tomatoes yeah you know, we got four rows of tomatoes that's 20 plants uh most of them are Roma. There are some big boys in there. And then we've got our poblano peppers here. These first two rows here. That center row is more jalapeno. And then we've got a variety of colored bell peppers that are right there. So that is our... And this will be enough to sustain us um, and be able to can with. And all this outside my shed this box here is literally built out of just cedar fencing um and i did use uh untreated pine for the corners um unfortunately i just couldn't find cedar that was big enough for to suit my needs and i had it there for scrap uh the cedar won't rot it won't nothing it, it's actually really good for this application um and then my soil is just uh plain old topsoil that I mixed in some uh, blood and bone powder with 
to get it going. I actually put this up a few days ago to give that a chance to go in. And then I have, I think, maybe two bags of enriched soil in there also uh, to help the plants off the off the get-go. Um, the, the powders that I put in there, they're, they're slow reacting. So, I mean, it's going to take two, three weeks before they get... Uh, to, to be used by the plants um, as that breaks down in two three weeks then the plants will start grabbing that as fertilizer and then every six weeks after that I'll put more in it to give us healthy plants but that's an update on that and uh, <clears throat> so now that we got that let's uh, head back into the kitchen and have some conversation we're gonna talk about some cooking all right see you here in just one millisecond all right guys so back to the kitchen um, if you're new to my channel welcome I'm glad to have you uh, wouldn't be here without you. Well, I mean, I would be here without you, but it's so much more fun, um, with you here. I guarantee it. So, um, I hope you like the garden. Um, like I said, plan B is always important. Things come up, things happen. You need to adjust. Um, you know, the, is it, you know, not as fun as playing on the property and all that? Sure. I, to some extent, but I still get to play in the garden, and here's the added bonus. I get to give these plants to people who I know will take care of them, who will utilize the fruits and vegetables that come off of them. You know, so essentially this this accident, you know, this, this whatever you want to call it that has arrived by us not being able to plant at all um, has turned out to be a good thing. We get to... Uh, we get to feed families, so to speak. You know, they'll, somebody else is going to benefit from this. Although I'm sure there'd have been other people that benefited from it down the road, but it gets to happen now. That makes me happy. Um, that's a happy accident. And you know, Bob Ross said it best: with happy accidents. This is a happy accident. You know, it was unexpected. Didn't plan on it, but it all turned out okay. So I was thinking about. I was watching Rachel Ray, and. Uh, they were celebrating their 2,500th episode. Um, that's a lot of episodes, you know, hands down. So they, uh, uh, of that show, I mean, you figure there's, you know, 365 days a year. She may have about 300 episodes a year. So, I mean, that's still almost 10 years worth of episodes. And that's great. You know, that's she's doing it right. And, uh, and she is. And the fact that she has continued to do her show from her home, I think is awesome in and of itself. It makes it, at least in my opinion, it makes it feel like, you know, you're there with her. You're hanging out. It's it's more like watching somebody on YouTube doing something. It makes it very personal versus being on a stage with an audience and all that. Now, I don't know what the, say, financial implications are of not having a studio audience. I have no clue. But... I mean, she still has, I'm sure, some sponsors and, you know, all that. But anyhow, so it made me think about, uh, oh, <laughs> I saw this thing on the news. It was um, kind of the coolest thing ever. This uh, family in, over in England, they were walking on the beach. They were taking a family walk. Um, they live near the beach, uh, which isn't uncommon in England. It's an island. But the little this little girl who was like, maybe four years old uh, came upon a, a big rock that had a footprint in it. And it happened to be a footprint of a dinosaur. They put it on social media. It blew up on social media. And this one uh, archaeologist was just blowing their mom up trying to get a hold of them to be able to go look at the rock. This rock is too... 120 million years old, two and a half million years, I don't know, but it was millions of years old, this footprint was. Very rare find. It was so cool. And found by like a, a child, a young child. That's great. You know, imagine the stories she'll be able to tell when she gets older. You know, and, and the dad was so proud. The mom was so proud of the fact that you know, their daughter discovered this fossil. Anyhow, I thought that was cool, but I, and I wanted to share it with you. So today, <clears throat> I want to talk about cooking. You know, and, and what all it can bring to you. you know, now, I, I work in a restaurant, and I cook all the time, but there's a difference between cooking in a restaurant and cooking at home. Cooking in a restaurant, you have, you know, it, it's more, 
of an assembly line process. Um, and, and this holds true for pretty much any restaurant. I mean, if you can't go into a burger shop and order a steak, you know, you have to order what's on their menu. So, you know, they have processes for each of their items to be cooked, you know, and by today's standards, for the most part, especially with uh, chain restaurants, you know, the, it's so not mechanized, but the process is so uniform that it's not really cooking. It's almost like, manufacturing with an oven in some ways i which is great i like it i love it um it allows it opens you up to have so many more experiences and from a a business point of view it gives you a good consistent product no matter where you know how many restaurants you have so i get it i'm not knocking it by any means but it cooking at home you know it is a completely different beast i love to cook at home even though i may spend 10 to 12 hours in my restaurant to cook at home because it is so different is it, it brings so much joy. So what can cooking at home bring to the, bring to the table, so to speak? Um, I think about this all the time. I, I know with me personally cooking at home, it allows me to try different things. <clears throat> I can try different spices. I make things more from scratch where like in the restaurant, you know, everything's kind of pre-made for me. You know, I mean, in, in almost any restaurant, you have spice spice blends already done up. Like, once again, uniform and consistent. You know, and you want that. Where here, you know, if I want to make, you know, let's say if I want to make a pizza and I want to put something different in the crust, uh, a little garlic in the crust, I can't. You know, or, you know, it, the freedom of experimentation is is great which is another reason why i like to cook i can experiment with things you know you could experiment with things i, I say that all the time you know when we cook on wednesday nights you know, i say oh well, you know here is the basics for this you know this is how i do it you know you can make it your own you know that that to me is absolutely awesome um it gives you a chance to try new things you know, um, and, and, uh, add what you want to that. You know, uh, and it, like, but like, even like with the taco casserole we made, uh, a few weeks back, you know, you could take that and turn that and make it your own, you know, I mean, easily. Uh, the other day, I, matter of fact, I, I took that taco casserole, uh, the other night for dinner and instead of putting beef in it, I used chicken and used our own uh, chicken taco uh, spice blend. And after it was done cooking, I didn't put it in the oven. I took some burrito shells and I made burritos out of that as a filling uh, and, and just put the cheese in on top of that. And then I fried them in a shallow uh, thing of oil. It was fantastic. I don't mind saying it, but it was something I could do on my own. So cooking for me, it allows me to relax. You know, it allows me to experiment and and play, so to speak. I can watch, you know, and a lot of times when, um, and Rachel actually talked about this briefly on her show. You know, it gives you a chance to turn on the radio, you know, and or listen to some music and relax and then, you know, in my case, I like to watch old movies on YouTube. All right, I got one playing right now. It's uh, the Secret Land Operation High Jump. And it, it is a sci-fi... I don't know, it's a really weird film, but it involves military and sci-fi. And, you know, it's supposed to be based on actual events. But anyhow. Um, you know, so it, it relaxes. What else can cooking do for you? You know, not only does it allow you to be creative in your own home uh, and experiment, but it can bring your family together, you know? Um, and I wish you guys could see that more from my side of it, but unfortunately most of my family doesn't like to be on video and, or doesn't like to be recorded for, I don't know what reason. I mean, I kind of get it cause it took me a long time before I could sit in front of this camera and do what I'm doing now. Um, I found it very weird talking to an inanimate object, but you know, it, it allows like me and Abby to spend time in here making simple desserts, or even if it's just simple, something simple as a salami sandwich, 
we do it together. Um, I sit in here with Sarah, and Sarah always uh, sends me uh, things on Instagram of quick, easy meals that she wants to try. So I, when I go to the grocery store, I buy the stuff to make it, and me and her sitting here. I most of the time I sit, and we talk, and you know, and she she makes it to see if it's something we would like. You know that that happens every you know a good portion of the time, <clears throat> and it brings us together. We talk about more than just cooking. You know, me and Chris get in here and cook. It gives us something to do. And we don't, you know, and it gives us a chance to talk about our day. You know, the other night we just had something simple as uh, andouille sausage and uh, fried potatoes. And while, you know, we were cooking it up, I was slicing potatoes. She was frying up sausage. You know, we, uh, we were able to talk about our day and how it went. You know, cooking does a lot for us. You know, it, it brings our family unit together. Um, now, I know some people will be like, well, I don't want to cook because I don't want to fail. And they get anxiety over that. It's okay to fail. You know, it doesn't matter what you do. It's okay to fail. Uh, hold on. I got to let the dog out. I'll be back in just one millisecond. Sorry about that. Sam had to go. It was, it was a matter of national urgency. But anyhow, failing. It's okay to fail. People fail all the time. It, it's it's what you do with it. Like in, in the cooking aspect, you know, when I take a, you know, every recipe I get, I get from somebody else, someplace. And as you may know, I will make it the way the recipe is written the first time. And then I think to myself, what, if anything, sometimes it doesn't need change. Sometimes it's perfect the way it is. But I... Most of the time, my thought is, what can I add to this to make it my own? Something that my family would like, you know, and need and want um, to make it more appetizing for our family or just to, you know, be creative with it. So, and it doesn't always work out. Sometimes I'll, I'll add something and I may add too much. I may not add enough. It may not be the right fit at all. Um, <clears throat> and it doesn't taste good. Sometimes it tastes horrible. Um, and sometimes it's a success. So what do you do if it tastes horrible? Does that mean you never make it again? No, you adjust it. You, you play with it, make it, you know, your own, you know, you may not make it, you know, again the next day, but you know, I know uh, like, like I always show my videos. I mean, I have a notebook and I write down my failures when we made the blueberry pie last week or the blackberry pie last week. I noticed the crust got a little too dark. It didn't burn by any means, but it got darker than I liked. So what I do? I wrote in there that next time, instead of, you know, 425, I'm going to try 400 degrees. You know, I'm going to put my pie ring on sooner. I'm going to cover it with foil sooner and, and see and pay a little more attention. Um, and then maybe it'll turn out lighter. It'll be more to my liking. Did it turn out horrible? No, absolutely not. It was actually a really good pie. But the aesthetics of it, Sam, were maybe not so good, you know, in my opinion. Now, everybody in the house thought it was, you know, wonderful, that it looked just fine. I thought it was just a hair too dark. <clears throat> but it gives you the opportunity to play. What else does cooking do? Um, like the things here I, I cook may not be the healthiest, you know, by any means, but... They're not completely unhealthy, you know, and you say to yourself, yeah, but Brian cakes and pies, uh, you know, or even some of the dishes I make, you're right. They're, they're probably not, you know, they're not salads. They're not, you know, but they involve fresh vegetables, no preservatives, no additives, you know, um, it, it, I know what's going in there and I can control that amount, you know, um, nothing I cook is fancy. Uh, and it's not that I don't want to work that hard. Some of the things I cook can be considered fancy, but fancy to me isn't filling um, in that aspect. The whole point of cooking, for the most part, is to bring people together. You know, I mean, it's to, to feed you, obviously, if you're hungry, you cook. Um, but it brings people together. By cooking in our kitchen, it brings my family together. You know, I can invite other people over, like my neighbors come over for cookouts. 
you know, things like that. It, it brings us together as a community, all because of cooking. It's something that we have in common. We all like to eat. So what not a better way than to meet people is to cook. One thing I, I think should be brought back, um, and that's like anytime somebody moves into the neighborhood new, at one time in life, you brought over a gift basket. You know, your neighbors, that's how you introduced yourself. You brought over a pie and said, hi, my name's Brian. You know, it's nice to meet you. Welcome to the neighborhood. And that's how you got to know people. You know, or you baked a loaf of bread. You did whatever it was you do, and, and you gifted it. You know, cooking does a million things. You know, but the, 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 the best part is the control. You know, um, I, I've known and lost so many people um, over, the, over the years. And a majority of them, not that, not that all of them were spring chickens, so to speak, but none of them were like horribly old. But it seems like their their world revolved around processed foods and eating out. You know, and I'm not against some processed foods. I'm not against eating out. You know, we don't do a whole lot of eating out at all. Um, I mean, very rarely. I, even pre-pandemic, we eat out a whole lot. But, you know, we do occasionally use processed foods. I mean, as you know, uh, canned goods, processed foods. Um, and the more I, I learn, I'm able to show you, uh, the more we'll get away from that. Like the, the garden we were just looking at, those tomatoes, those tomatoes are going to do a few different things. Um, we will use some of them to make our own sauce, our own crushed tomatoes, you know, that way I know there's truly nothing in those but tomato. You know, just tomato. Now, I will say most of the sauces I buy now in cans are just tomato. Um, occasionally, they'll have something in them to preserve a little. But for the most part, they're just tomato. I try very hard when I go do go grocery shopping to buy preservatives or buy stuff. It, it's minimal on the preservatives. The, and then some of those tomatoes will go to start making Rotel. Um, you know, and then that way I can, I don't have to buy canned Rotel anymore. I'll have my own. Um, and I know what's in those. Not that there's a whole lot in Rotel, but there are preservatives. And as a, and this is just a theory, you know, I, I don't, I have not done any research um, other than me and Chris talking about it, but we feel that there is, there could potentially be a link between the amount of preservatives you eat and ingest in your system and cancer. You know, so it's better to be able to not eat the preservatives. You know, and I can't tell you how many fresh canned stuff we've given, you know, we've given to people to try to show them. Don't charge them, you know. We don't charge for anything. That's like when my one neighbor came over and I asked him if he wanted some of those plants to put in his garden. And he said, well, of course. And he has a, uh, uh, maybe one of his daughters or a cousin or something. But anyhow, one of his family members also wants something. And he said, well, you know, we'll pay you for those plants. Absolutely not. You know, uh, why would I charge for something that didn't really cost me anything? You know, Hey, that's just a handful of plants and what I have in the garden if we're successful this year, which I, I really think we will be, um, by the time I'm done canning it and preserving it, I will have everything I needed and I will have saved a bunch of money. You know, I mean, a packet of seeds is, you know, in our case, I think they were $4, four and change, three ninety five maybe, uh, plus shipping. And I'll, I'll probably get at least just in tomatoes, 20, 25 cans of sauce. I'm hoping yeah, if we do it right, that's what we'll get. Well, that's, you know, $30 or more of tomato sauce, just in sauce. That doesn't include all the pickled jalapenos and all that. So I, I think, you know, that that's good. Plus it's a, it's a good neighborly thing to do. You know, it, it costs me nothing. Well, let's talk about, let's think about the average cost of a plant. You know, so you, you, you buy your seeds, okay? You spend $4, you get 20 seeds. You know, so you're talking literally 50 cents, maybe? No, not even. 
I maybe twenty cents a seed, you know, at most, at twenty cents a seed. And then what's it cost to grow a plant? You might might use two gallons of water for that one plant through the whole season. You know, I mean, you pour more water on the ground, but the that plant itself probably isn't using more than two gallons of water. So what is uh, what does a gallon of water cost? A gallon of water cost. I know in Columbus when we lived there, it was a tenth of a cent per gallon. You know, here I, I think it's about the same living in Newark, um, but we'll even we'll say five tenths of of a cent. So and, and that that's it, that's it. Your soil, you're gonna put it in the ground. You, you, I mean, you pay for your soil, but you pay for it when you buy your property, you know, or whatever you're renting. Um, in my case, with the raised bed, you know, I I think that entire raised bed, the entire thing, and this is just initial setup, was maybe thirty five, forty dollars. You know, um, and I'll be able to use that over and over and over again. You know, every year I'll add some new nutrients next year, but that's it. I'll never have to buy soil again. I'll never have to buy you know. Uh, the cedar to make that again <clears throat> so it's done the initial cost 30 bucks you know maybe 40 on the high end so i'm up to 40 dollars for the the box and the soil i'm up to 20.05 cents per plant so i may have maybe a total of six bucks worth of plants sitting in that bed and for that, if we do it right and have a good growing season, it doesn't cost us millions of dollars, you know, or it doesn't, we have good weather and it's not 900 degrees outside and all that. We just stocked our pantry for most of the winter and it, with, with what we're growing out there and it cost us, what, maybe $50 total. And I'm still able to give all those plants away to other people to be able to do the same thing, you know, and that is awesome. And it's, it, that's what cooking can do for you. That's what it can lead into, you know, so you, you, you garden, you grow your own, you control what's in your food, minimize the preservatives. You get to cook something that you get, you get to cook something with your family and you get to potentially share it with your neighbors, you know, and bring people together. I think that is an amazing thing, all from cooking. All right, well, that's all I got to say today, but I really wanted to show you what we got going on with the vegetables. And I wanted to talk about the importance of cooking. I wanted to help celebrate. Uh, I, I know I'm a little weird. I watch a lot of daytime TV, but that's me. Uh, I wanted to kind of celebrate Rachel Ray's 2,500th episode. Um, she did a cook along with pot pies, which inspired me to uh, do a pot pie. Uh, I'm not going to do Rachel's pot pie. Uh, I have one of my own that I'm going to tweak a little, and uh, and you'll get to watch me tweak it a little. So that's what we're going to do tomorrow for dinner. We're going to make pot pie. Um, I'm probably I haven't decided whether we're going to do beef or chicken, but it'll be one or the other. What we'll do is I'll uh, talk to the the crew here at the house to find out what they want to do chicken or beef and that's what we'll make for that uh thursday's dessert i'm still not sure what we're gonna bake um i i'm leaning towards a pie but we may do a cake we may even do cookies um but we're kind of had a hankering for a cherry pie and so i, I want to try that um Try maybe doing a cherry pie, or we may do something involving pineapples. We've been on kind of a pineapple kick lately also. So, but we'll see. I'll let you know. Um, I'll probably let you know tomorrow while we're cooking. That way, once again, I can, you know, talk to the family and, and see what uh, we think we need that's extra sugary and yet healthy, and not healthy, but better for you. Um, <laughs> that's what, what I'm going to call it healthy. We're going to call it better for you. That That is what... A good healthy meal is brings family together may not be healthy but it's good for you good for the soul that's the important thing is good for the soul all right don't forget to subscribe once again if you're new i hope you enjoyed this video go back watch some of my old videos to see what we're all about 
Uh, next week on June the 9th, which is my birthday, we will officially be going to Mr. Smith's Kitchen. So if that pops up instead of uh, Brian's Aquatic Thoughts and Things, um, it's me. I hope I don't lose you as a subscriber. But like I said a few videos back, we're going a different, a little different route. We're not, you know, our main focus has, has changed. And I really like the way we're, we're headed with this. So I think we're going to stay. This way we can keep talking about different things. We can cook some stuff. We can bake some stuff. And spend some time together. Because that's the important thing is spending time together. Getting to know each other. All right. I love you. I will see you tomorrow for dinner. Tell somebody else you love them. It'll make their day a whole lot better, I promise. And uh, see you tomorrow. All right. Bye.